I like the silicone. It was. All right. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, September 7th, 2023, Planning Board meeting. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, introduction to board members, to all the way to the left is Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, uh, Don Gennarelli, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, and Rick Rains. We also have Irish Griffith, the Code Enforcement Officer, and Hannah Bonine of SMPDC. All right, uh, and I will open up the public hearing for conditional use, Beaver Dam Campground, 551 School Street, R53, Lot 13A, Walsh Engineering. If you could just come up and give us a brief description, and then we'll let the public uh, make their comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Bill Walsh with Walsh Engineering. I'm here with uh, Tommy Mulkey, who's with um, Castle Park Investments, the owner of the project, and Anthony Andrews, who's the um, architect that's working on the project as well. Um, the, as you said, the plan before you is a conditional use permit for um, the Beaver Dam campground. We're taking it from 78-unit um, existing campground to a 56-unit campground. Um, it, the Castle Park group has um, been operating this for a couple years now, and uh, their idea really is to um, improve the park, make it a little bit, or improve the campground and make it um, much more green than it is today um, by reducing impervious areas and bringing in um, units, RV units, that will um, stay in place there. So we will eliminate sort of the in and out of, uh, of trailers coming back and forth. Um, the existing parcel is 26.8 acres. Um, it's located in several districts. It's in the R3 district, which is the, um, on the right button, which is behind this yellow and blue line and green line. Um, the limited residential, which is the 250 foot shoreland zone away from or zone two, the zone 250 feet from the from the uh, water. The resource protection, which is from this line right here to the left, up in this space, and the stream protection district, which exists down here um, on this part of the project. As I said, 78 existing sites, 48 are water and electric. There are four primitive sites and two cabins that are located right there. Um, and there are 24 full hookup sites that exist on the site um, right now, meaning full hookups by mean sewer, water, and electric. Um, there is a bathhouse, and you saw that today. There's a bathhouse, there's an existing pool, there's a, a, what, the remnants of an old sawmill, um, there's the beach area right here. There are a couple of docks that exist out here in the water. For utilities that exist out here, there's a drinking water well, which is right back here. Um, I, didn't think, I don't think I pointed that out, but we actually walked right by it. That's the, the drinking water well was, was on this backside of our walk this afternoon. There is a wastewater disposal system that exists right here. Again, that's for um, 20, the 24 units that are hooked up to it. And uh, there is overhead electric that runs through the site coming off of the Route 9. The proposed, um, from a regulatory standpoint, I think I talked about that, these, these are the, the different zones. And we have um, the majority of the development is back here in the 250-foot um, limited residential district. 
uh, skip through that. The proposed project is, um, again, as I said, they're, they're trying to take this and, and make it a much more green and ecological, ecologically green project, if you will, um, by reducing the area of the, of the pavement. This is the proposed project by reducing the, the paved areas. Um, the, the proposed um, park will have a parking area out front here, where I think all of you park today. Um, and guests will come and park in this space, and they'll be taken um, to the sites via um, a golf cart type vehicle out to the site. So we'll, we're going to eliminate traffic, um, everyday traffic sort of running through the site. Um, we, the, the road itself, this part of the road here, will be uh, six foot wide gravel, and on the edges of that will be grass pavers, so it will allow for fire truck and emergency vehicles to get all the way around here. There's a turnaround at the end and, and go back out. This will be a nine foot wide path that runs through here. That's wide enough, and we've, we've discussed this with the fire chief to have him bring in his emergency vehicles as well. This will be a nine-foot path and a nine-foot path that service um, the uh, park model cabins that we're proposing there. Um, I proposed also, we, we stood out there this afternoon where a, there will be a proposed restaurant. That restaurant is back behind the 250-foot setback. Um, it will um, it will have a kitchen with it and restaurant and uh, Serve the serve the guests that that are at the campground. There will be an existing um, office and um, business center that will be located in the existing building that we saw. The the garage spaces that are here will be um, remodeled and made into a sort of operational parts of the campground for their for their use. Uh, we, as I said, the campsite density is going from 78 units down to 56 units, so we're reducing the number of units here. The idea of, of this, and as I said, of sort of making it green, as you all, well, not all of you saw, but who are at the site walk today, there's a fair amount of gravel out there that obviously is impervious and runs off. The idea is to um, reduce that with these paths and just have grass in those spaces. So again, try to keep it much more green than it is today. Um, what that does is um, improves water quality, allows for more infiltration, and less runoff. So that's a big part of what we're doing. We've situated all of the units in here in places where they fit in between trees and on existing sites. So we've been very um, studious about making sure that those are, are in a place where, um, where, where, where sites exist today. Um, our impervious area, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but we're actually going from 33% of the site that is impervious now down to 19.8%. So we're actually bringing it into conformance of, of the regulations down below that 20% threshold. Um, there will be a new septic system proposed here with a, with a treatment system, a pre-treatment system that will be used. So. All of the effluent from the, the sites and the development here will, will go through a gravity system. It'll be pumped up to that treatment tank and discharged in, into the septic field. Uh, for fire protection, we have met with um, we met with Chief Plant, talked in detail with him about this and about the road system, and I think he wrote a, a letter um, with, with it saying he was, he was good with the system. We will have one hydrant that's going to end up out here. It's going to be a dry hydrant that's connected into the pond. Um, we'll be able to draw water out of the pond. Um, we've provided our low impact design statement that I think was in the original submission. Um, we are going to be in compliance with all the campground performance standards. Um, we have obviously designed something that we, we believe has will enhance this, um, this landscape, um, making it more green and better. Than, it, than exists today by reducing stormwater runoff, by creating a um, septic system that treats the whole site presently. And one thing I neglected to point out to you today, there is a dump station down here in this very corner that is what's being used today. So wastewater gets collected out here in a little honey wagon and dropped into that. So um, 
opportunity for issues with that exists, and we're taking that away by having a new a, a new wastewater system that will be um, handled through pipes and be a modern system. Um, we heard we've heard a couple of comments I think from the board. One of those is is the pickleball. We understand that. We understand the noise issues associated with that. Um, two things that we are proposing is to have a, a, an acoustic wall, if you will, along this side of the um, of the pickleball court to help keep the noise away. And I think the other thing that is, I guess, the, the latest in noise deadening are what they call green paddles, and we will be we will be um, requiring people to use those green paddles, not use their own paddles if they come to the site, so that noise can be reduced um, as much as we possibly can. Uh, we also did have the well tested. Um, we had uh, hydro, a hydrogeological engineer, or a hydrogeologist rather, um, test the well, do a pump test on it. Uh, it was a preliminary pump test on it, um, but what we found was there was at least 15 gallons per, per minute coming out of that pump, which is more than sufficient for us. If we have to put in some tankage, we'll put in, we'll put in some tankage. We haven't gotten into the design of that system yet, but. We're confident there was very little drawdown in it in the in the time that he um, in the time that he tested that and ran through that. So we're comfortable with that. Um, I know there was uh, consideration about the um, about the flood zone. This is actually not in a flood zone. It's not the the land itself is not in the flood zone. So um, I think we feel relatively comfortable with kind of where we are with these units and and being able to being able to keep them there. So I think that's the. That's the skinny on the project. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. All right. Now, any member of the public can come and speak. Um, just state your name and your address and state your comments, please. Can I be first? Yep. Are you the only one? My name is Sharon Patterson. I live, well, I don't live there, but where's the pointer? Uh -huh. Okay, so I own the daycare that abuts. My concern is the noise from the pickleball. Uh, Miss Patterson? Which? Miss Patterson, could I, wh where yeah. do you live? I live in South Bend. I own 541 okay. School Street and 543 School Street. Okay, thank you. Both of which are affected by the pickleball. <clears throat> um, so my concern is that the noise, I have 50 children daily at the daycare, from six weeks of age to 12 years. It's loud. It's an issue all over the country, pickleball. Um, you know, he talks about this noise deadening fence or whatever it is, green paddles. Is the pickleball going to be open to the public? Is it for use for just the campground? You know, what are the hours going to be? He those can't all... answer those questions until old business. So you just ask us the questions, yeah. and then when we get to old business after the public hearing, he'll be answering them. Okay. Um, you know, it is, I don't know if any of you are aware, I'm sure you are aware that it's a huge issue in the country right now, pickleball and the noise. And he talks about how green this is going to be, but I don't think the noise is going to be very green. You know, it's, it's loud. I have a friend that lives over a mile away from the court in New York, and he can hear it. A mile away. Where 150 feet from the courts. You can pick something better than pickleball for a green campground. How about a basketball court? How about a tennis court? A bocce ball? I don't know. Something. But I think it's an issue. I don't know. I'm surprised I'm the only one. There's a lot of neighbors. I'm surprised I'm the only one complaining about it. It's a loud noise. Um, and that's it, I guess. I want to, you know, and he talked about the green paddles, but he said people will, you know, can use their own paddles. Well, how can they use their own paddles? Oh, I thought you said that they could use their own, free to use their own paddles. Yeah. They're not allowed to use their own paddles. Okay, I apologize. I thought, I, I didn't hear you correctly. Um, but I just think it's something that needs to be considered. Okay. There's some little ears over there. Damage to the ears. It's huge when you're little. You don't recover from it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. 
John Van Dusen, 557 School Street. Um, I'll start right at the entrance. When I read and looked at the plans online, the 56 sites, got that pretty simple. There's only 56 parking spaces. So not allowing for any visitors. If the restaurant is open to the public, you have no parking for the restaurant. Um, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. But that leads me into the other thing. The restaurant is a really big question mark. Uh, there was a couple of questions asked today. I know they couldn't answer at the walkthrough. Is the restaurant open to the public? Is it open year round? Where are people going to park? I mean, I don't think it's any great secret. We don't have an abundance of dining in Berwick. So if you happen to open a good restaurant, a lot of people are going to want to go. Um, but there is no, there's no parking for it whatsoever. I don't think there's enough parking to even handle what they intend to do for the park. So that would be a big one. The other thing that I really would like to hear a straight answer, is this new park still going to be seasonal? Or are they going to try to open longer months or year round? Um, through my list here. The pickleball, um, I definitely had it on my list, and I hate to say this, but when I looked at where they were putting it, I said, well, it's way over there, I'm over here. So I walked away from it not feeling as bad about it, but I absolutely agree. Everybody, if you look at every municipality around, everybody is complaining about pickleball noise. Um, it just, it's, it's a reality. So, you know, yeah, it didn't end up in my backyard, it did in yours. And I can certainly understand your concern. Um, but I think that covers the worst of what I had. Uh, one other thing that when I first looked at the plan, and I'd really like, you know, I, I like what they're doing. I've lived next to Beaver Dam Campground for 25 years. I've seen it's been a great little campground. I like what the proposal is, but what scares the Jesus out of me is that this doesn't fly. You've created a perfect situation to have a mobile home park in there now. Um, oh, yeah we, yeah, we went in and we did all this, and we're not really happy with the return we're getting, so we're just going to make it into a mobile home park. It's all there. It's all ready to go. And that's something I would want to see some absolute assurance that that can't happen. That's it. Thank you. Please say <laughs> Hi, Keith Shumway. I'm at 547. Can you say I'm your name again, please? Keith Shumway. Keith. Okay. Along with the concerns they've had, I kind of missed the walkthrough, and I haven't even really looked at the plan yet. But from living there for over 20 years, um, I've got an issue with the restaurant, I had the same question. Uh, is, it, is it going to be year-round? Is it going to be open to the public? If so, parking is an issue. And also that entranceway is a nightmare. There have been many, many closed calls with vehicles and trailers going in and out of that campground. I've almost witnessed a couple. All you got to do is look at the skid marks in front of, in front of there. Um, I also, from being there so long, uh, have had issues with my water situation. Maybe not related, but it seems to be from the last owners, just prior to the last rehab. Um, soon after that, I was having issues with my well. Yes, it is a deep well. But I always wonder about filling swimming pools, and there's going to be an additional swimming pool. Maybe not related, but it just seems really coincidental that I'm having issues with my well since all of these rehabs have happened. <coughs> so beyond that, uh, being open year-round, I also agree with can this become a mobile home park? I certainly hope not. 
um, the additional traffic, the noise, I directly abut that entrance. And I've been dealing with the noise for many years, but I put up with it because it's seasonal. It's not bad, I deal with it, but if it's going to be a year-round event, it's, it's going to be a problem. And I would, if anything, would want a fence put up on my property. So that's pretty much what I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With Laura Sheldon, I live at 548 School Street, Berwick, which is right across from the Beaver Dam campground. <clears throat> I certainly share all the concerns that have already been expressed. Um, in addition to that, regarding the entrance, um, as Keith was saying, there have been near collisions. There have been several collisions. And I've twice had to call the 911 for blood-curdling screams from people involved in those accidents. We know that the state has reached out last year, suggesting that they're going to be doing um, some work on the road right up until you get to the river where the entrance to the Beaver Dam campground is. My understanding is that it, it stops, the, the study stops before they get there, but I think it's essential that someone is looking at how this would actually impact that traffic, that, that entrance, that exit, the noise alone from the from the trucks that have to stop and go when cars are entering and exiting is a lot. It's it's all the time. It's incessant, and so to have an increase in that, and especially if we are talking about a restaurant that's open to the public, as was mentioned on the sidewalk today, that it would actually be open to the public. Again, there's not enough parking there for for the current number of sites, let alone more of the. Um, you know, actual public that, that would be there. So my concern is that there's, there's, there's not a really clear plan for what that would actually look like. And a bigger concern is, as Keith also suggested, regarding the, the water. We did have issues with our own well. Again, we are across the street. We had to make some changes to that last year, make some repairs on our own well. But this year, for the first time, I've lived there for 15 years now, this was the first time repeatedly we smell a smell of sewer. The, the pond behind our house is brown. It looks like chocolate. I don't know why that's happening, but hearing him talk about this honey pot that they're carrying, you know, that water to that, that filtration system, whatever that system is that wasn't pointed out to us today, I have very serious concerns about what that already looks like. I would certainly like to see that um, addressed in this, but not further um, you know, not any, adding any further impact to that. I think it is already having a detrimental impact on the environment. Certainly, again, the smell and the sound already. I appreciate very much the idea of creating a green space that has more grass, that has more permeability for that water to go somewhere to run off. I have a real serious concern about why they would be putting two plunge pools so close to, to the water and saying that's not a flood zone. I mean, I'm telling you, the water levels are not what they used to be, and I cannot imagine that we are not going to see water in that pool coming up out of that out of that dam. So, again, I think it, it you know, certainly, um, I would like to see someone really looking at the impact this could have on the environment, um, but also more importantly, um, the safety, because again, you know, that those little children. You know, they're out there all the time. You know, they're the ones who are coming up and down the road in the morning. And this year we witnessed a collision with a school bus just trying to cross the bridge. Nobody crossed the line. Nobody even crossed the line. But in that storm, they couldn't even make their way across. And it, again, it's sounds you don't want to hear. Sounds you don't want to hear. You don't want to see these things happen. And I think this just really needs um, some serious attention. So thank you for your time. And I appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. Well, my name is Dave Cadius. I own approximately 600 acres in the backside of where this project is. 
And uh, I build houses for a living. That's one of my jobs. I've noticed in the last 20 years, the wells that I used to have, it's all the same guy that drills the wells, went from 235 feet for the correct amount of water to 325 feet. And the 235 foot well keeps going dry in one of my rentals. And never did that before. So things happen. The byproduct of, I don't know if you remember, this was a sawmill. Tannic acid is a byproduct of all that breaking down, and it pollutes the water. If you fall in Beaver Dam campground right now in a white shirt, you're going to come out brown instantly. Uh, as far as I've taken a canoe right over all these sites before when it floods. That was 30, 40 years ago. I did it. I know that floods. If, especially if the culvert fails on the other side of the road of Route 9. Um, as far as the affluent, they're taking a dump station and taking that dump station and making it into a leach field. Now, they got many different type of leach fields out there and how they work, but still the affluent goes into the ground instead of being pumped by a local whoever and going to the borough dump station. That's a few things. Uh, I have issues with a pickleball court because I'm going to put two houses within, I'd say, uh, 450 feet. And when I told the code enforcement officer, not this one, that I was going to do that, I had to get an environmental impact study. It cost me $86,000. And I'm all set with that now. But I haven't heard that yet. I haven't heard that in my environment impact study yet. Uh, I also know, because I popped too many trees out of the ground too close to the water, that I had to go in with the DEP and uh, study the blending turtles and take blood and samples out of that. But I haven't heard of that here yet. That's part of that impact study. So. I know that I, how much money I've put into my property to develop it, and though I, I went through quite a few hurdles in the last 40-something years. I haven't heard those hurdles here that were put on me, so be aware that I don't sit back and let things roll over me. If something happens, I attack it. So please be very careful what you grant. Look back through the records. What you told me, I can't do. So, Don knows. Don, you're probably going to have to step back out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I worked. I worked 37 years for the government, and I had a nice, cushy job. You know, I'm very thorough for what I do. So, anyway, I just wanted to. Let things be known. I am going to propose. I don't know. I'm not going to bother. But I'm going to propose right around this corner. Right in here. That's more houses. So I'll be able to look right into the campground from those houses. I know they're. I know what it's. I don't want to see a campground here. I definitely don't want to see permanent structures. And uh, that's what it looks like to me. And any time you change from a, a non-permanent structure to a permanent structure, I think that impact study kicks in. So, but, but if you know, I already spent over 80000 I've probably got close to a million dollars back. So, I'm not done yet. Thanks, David. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, one of the abutters that was at the site walk but is not able to be here tonight asked that I um, address her comments to the board. Okay. So at this time, if it's okay with you, I'd like to do that. Yes, please. Um, so Wendy Guptill 
was there. Uh, she lives over um, on Lentworth Road. And her only two concerns, uh, which she and I did discuss a little bit, were the traffic. Um, and she's just worried because it is, you know, that's the streets getting busier as time goes on and things are more developed. So she is concerned about that and wants the board to be aware. And she is also aware, uh, also concerned about the pickleball noise because unfortunately, I'm sure the board remembers the Guptals are one of the families that are most impacted by the gun range noise as well. And while that is still being worked out, the thought of, in her words, the thought of being pinned in between the gun range noise and the pickleball noise is enough to drive her crazy. So, um, and I don't blame her for a hot minute on that one. <laughs> so she would like the board to take that into consideration. Where's the gun range in relation to the property? Uh, so we were off of School Street, Wentworth Road. Meter Lane is off of Wentworth Road, so it's across and a ways off. But the Guptals happen to be located almost like across Route central. 9 on the other yes. side of Route 9. Okay. Yes, right. but they happen to be right in between where the gun range is gotcha. and where this campground is. Thank you. So, and those were the only comments that I received while we were there from people that knew they wouldn't be here and I did check the email prior to coming back in here and nobody had emailed any anything. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Nope. All right. Um there was other people at the site walk we did say that it was the public hearing was here and not at the um, campground. I don't know if they had anyone show up thinking that it was there. <laughs> you, we you, walked. You, okay. And then you came over here. They had a golf cart out front. Okay. To sign out the okay. Um, and at that point, I, think I I do apologize on behalf of the planning department. We. It was not caught. That okay. was, I discovered it after you guys told me to look, so. <laughs> um, what is the board's feeling of closing this public hearing or leaving it open? <clears throat> I, know, I know how I feel. Um, I would hate to, due to an error on our part, mm -hmm. um, close something where somebody might come and say, I waited at, even though there's a sign there, I went there and I couldn't make it here or whatever. I guess the long and short of it is that I would I would feel better if this was extended or kept open or tabled or however we want to word it with a motion to, um, to keep the public hearing for one more meeting, okay. personally. I would say I could that motion. Yeah. All right, well, we don't need a motion. We'll just, take, we'll just uh, leave it open. Um, so, moving on, uh, first public comment. This is open to anyone from the public. Um, this is about non-agenda items. Um, if you'd like to come up, just state your name and your comment. Hi, Kara Malene, 47 Alley Pond Road. This may walk a fine line, but I will try and keep it strictly to the procedural issues of the last meeting that I wasn't allowed to speak on. About a month ago, um, a developer was at final approval with a brand new plan and had it approved with conditions. Then Hannah sent a letter asking the board to reconsider that vote because it did not follow proper procedure. At the last meeting, I believed the plan was going to be Plan C. Plan D was proposed as a final with no warning, no complete packet presented. Here's Plan D, and it got approved. Again, not following proper procedure. I, I would really hate to see the signatures go on that plan that was delivered today by the engineer at the beginning of the meeting. Um, 
I've had an interesting conversation with the federal EPA today, and I have reached out to the Commissioner of Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. The board is well aware that the entrance now on Plan D is right on top of a Blandings Turtle nest site. It shouldn't happen. These are endangered species. Subdivision regulations are not being followed. And I don't understand why. Thank you. Thank you. Next is approval of minutes for August 17, 2023. Um, I did notice an error um, in old business on Worcester Road. It says uh, recused Rick Rains for conflict of interest. That needs to be struck out. Um, Rick was a voting member on that. Um, it looks like they just put him on that and on the uh, alley pond, which the alley pond he is supposed to be recused on. Like to, Mike. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes as amended with that change. Okay. Second. All right. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Abstain. 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 You wanted to abstain? Yep. Okay. Moving on, old business, preliminary plan and conditional use, major subdivision, Norman Court, R44, lot 20, civil consultants. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Neil Rapozin with Civil Consultants, uh, here on behalf of um, Norman Court LLC. Uh, this is um, the same, uh, basically the same plan that was presented at Sketch. Uh, the project is uh, three six-unit apartment buildings uh, to be constructed on the south side of uh, the existing Norman Court right away, with Norman Court being upgraded to town standards uh, to allow it to support uh, the proposed use. Um, it's uh, the impact uh, of the overall site uh, is less than less than an acre of impervious area, so uh, it required a DEP permit by rule, which is uh, basically an erosion control plan and uh, and uh, the study to, to look for any uh, any impacted species or, or uh, natural resources here. Uh, that was submitted uh, in early July and was approved. So that uh, that permit by rule is in place uh, for this project currently. Uh, since uh, it was last presented, uh, the only uh, the only change to the plans was due to discussion with uh, Maine Water, uh, who handles the water district uh, duties. Uh, and they had wanted a, a little bit different layout for the water main that's going to be extended into Norman Court uh, right away, and we relocated the uh, the fire hydrant that uh, Chief Plant had had indicated he'd like to see on the site. Uh, we're just waiting for confirmation that it's in a location that that he's still okay with. Uh, but from previous discussions with him, uh, we believe that it's it's uh, this is where it's going to be for where it's going to be on the. On the final plan, it went from down here by by the buildings near you know, the turnaround, and pulled it up towards the main Norman Court uh, improved roadway. So uh, beyond that, uh, is very little uh, changed. Very really little changed with the with the project. So happy to answer any questions and address any any comments you have. So these are public utilities, sir. Water and sewer and, and the water and sewer department express they have the capacity. To yeah, yeah, we had um, the well serve letters are in the application. Okay. And now we've just been working with, uh, with both Underwood and Main Water, and uh, they've been uh, giving us uh, small tweaks to the to the design. And I actually just have this um, the latest the latest changes with the utilities are back out to, to Main Water, so they can kind of do their final their final check on everything.
Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that we find this application complete. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, next is scheduling the public hearing. Uh, I was I was writing, and I honestly did not bring the calendar with me, um, so I so don't know what we. We don't have any site walks to schedule tonight, so I think no, one. Right. Whenever. Are we going to have enough time to notice for the next meeting, or should we skip the next meeting and do the first meeting in September? October. 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 Sorry. Oh, geez, September. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at that calendar. It says oh, August. Boy. So. <laughs> Um, honestly, because Terry is out, yeah. I mean, I can potentially come so in and do it tomorrow, but if the applicant and Neil are okay with it, I would just assume. I know. Neil yeah, does not look okay with Neil it. Neil does not look okay with it. I'd like to have, you know, as, as, soon as, as soon as possible, as soon as we can. To get well, let me, to may embrace I? embrace technology and do this via email, and if, if they're agreeable and, and we're agreeable to a date, then... Well, let me let me just ask this, Neil. Did you submit um, the abutters list? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as long as I can get my hands on that, I can. Um, which is probably right in here in front of my face, but I can do those this weekend. So they'll go out on Monday, so we can make the next meeting. So okay. Two weeks out. Yes. Yeah. So then the public hearing will be set on the twenty-first. Okay. Of public September. hearing. 921. Just as long as I don't have to fight to find the abutters list, then we're then we're good. I can make this happen. Okay. There, wait, hold on. Oh, well, wait a minute. Hannah's got a hold up. Here. Kind of my fault, but whatever. Um, in order to find the application complete, you have to grant the waiver that they asked for. So either... I you thought we already did that. Did you already do that? I, I thought we did I that. I thought we did that. Never mind. Yeah. Um, Just kidding. I did the correct before thing. Before we did the site walk, we. Um, That's we, right. We, You're we, right. We granted that. Oh, that good job making sure we got our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, so I will make sure that tomorrow I get uh, in here and get some public hearing notices out. Okay. If, if it's easier, if you want to put up a public notice, send it to us, we can overnight everything. That's okay. I, I can get it. I just got to uh, convince James to do the newspaper notification because okay. I don't do that part. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay because then any mistakes don't follow me. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you All right, next in old business is conditional use Beaver Dam Campground, 551 School Street, R53, Lot 13A, Walsh Engineering. May I contribute a little something in this, uh, in regards to this, yeah. in regards yes, to please. the multiple uh, concerns, very valid concerns about this turning into a mobile home park? Um, I think it is very beneficial for the board and the public to know that mobile home parks are not allowed in the R3 district. They are prohibited by zoning ordinance. Therefore, it would never be allowed to be transferred from a campground to a mobile home park. You guys would not be allowed to approve that, and I would not allow be allowed to approve any permits to move a mobile home in there. So it's not much help, but it's a little something. <laughs> Um, I guess I, I, I ask what uh, how you'd like to move forward. I think if we're going to continue, maybe we can address these all at once when we have yep. all of the comments. Yeah, if you mind uh, addressing these issues that they. You want me to try to deal with these today, or do let's you start with pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be besides the mobile home park, it seems to be the next most concerning point to sure. the development. So. I'll, I'll say something about this. The noise ordinance for the town is 15 consecutive minutes and the hours between 7 and 10, except for uh, the 4th of July week and was it New Year's, where it goes from 10 to midnight. Um, that's all the town has for noise ordinance and standards. So 
So to say you can't do this, we don't have any power to say what they can and can't do on this. This is up to their discretion and it's yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple of things here, right? They have guests staying here. I mean, the, 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 who are going to be closer than any of the neighbors. Um, there's not a desire for them to piss off their guests if others are playing pickleball. So I think the idea is to do everything we can using the green paddles, using noise attenuation fencing, and try to contain that noise as much as possible. Does it make noise? Yeah, they do. I, I'm not going to debate that with anybody, but I think if we can do everything that we can, make sure that people are using the green paddles, make sure that we do put up fencing and meet the ordinance, um, the town requirements. That's, I think, what, what we intend to do. I don't think there's any desire, Tommy, or the ownership to be a bad neighbor here. I think they very much want to be a good neighbor to, to the neighborhood. So, so you had talked to... Excuse Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. You, you had talked a little bit about uh, some sort of acoustic barrier. Yeah. And where is that and what's that made of? And uh, is it going to be uh, on the campground side or is it going to yeah, be yeah. on the abutter side? No, no. It would be on, it would be on the edge, this edge of the, of, the, um, of the pickleball court. So it would be, you know, on the, on the, on the abutter side. side. On the abutter side. Okay. Yeah, on, on, the, on the, not on the abutter's land, but on the a butter side of the pickleball course. Okay. And it will be a requirement that they use the green paddles. Correct. Okay. Correct. So nobody can bring their own Correct. louder paddles. Correct. Okay. And this is not intended to be open to the public in the pickleball courts. It's okay. for the people yeah. that are at the campground. Um, Just a thought, sir, and, I, and, and you know, fact finding and in the interest of being neighborly and you know with with your abutters would you guys be at all agreeable or or look into um you know i own a, a rental property that's adjacent to a major highway mm -hmm. and the state came in and they put in the noise mitigating panels yeah um would you consider putting noise mitigating panels along the tree line um and that keeps the sound directed towards your property and away from the others and that, that would be a good compromise and, and an olive branch certainly to your to your abutters is that something you guys would consider as a condition yeah i mean i think that's what i'm trying to say in, in different language that that sort of fence that noise attenuation fence along that side is exactly what that would be would you at, at the time of finding approval would you be able to provide some type of a uh, performance standard for that product that you intend to use like what yep. you are did intend to use and how much it attenuates or mitigates sure. the noise. Absolutely. Okay. We can do that. Um, you know, the the hours of pickleball, I think that was one of the questions of where it would be would they be the the hours that, that are allowed by the town ordinance. I think that would be where we would be. Realistically it's gonna probably gonna be daylight hours. I don't think they we're gonna be lighting these courts or anything, so it's gonna be primarily uh, dawn to dusk. Um, May I invite the board to, I, I don't know what product these developers may choose to use, but I know that because the town was looking into a pickleball court, James does have a couple of samples of different types of um, this type of sound deadening material that they use. Uh, I would like to invite the board to come in at any time to check out this particular product that James has to get some idea of what these products are so that you can be a little more enlightened before the next time they come before us, if you would like. Sorry, just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> um, as far as the parking goes, what, what we have are our 56 spaces here proposed, which, is, which equals the number um, of, the, of the units that we have. What we have looked at is um, overflow parking both here. Um, the septic system is going to be a concrete chambered system, which allows cars to park on it. So if there was for some reason a need for overflow parking, we have it. We can at least double that parking between here and just along the road in this space. So we certainly feel like we have plenty of space there um, to, to park if, if need be. We can is there any it. estimate about 
how many spaces the overflow would be? Yeah, it's, it, I, don't, I didn't bring the, the diagram with me, but I think it was it was 50 spaces at least that we had in there of additional spaces that okay. we could put that we could put here and along the road. So. And the intention would be to keep the restaurant open year round. Um, it, if the park stays open year round, yeah, the, the, the restaurant would be as well. But if the park is closed to renters, visitors, campers, uh, will the restaurant be closed? Yeah, I'm checking with the owner. So he said yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, I'm just running through this. The mobile home park, we talked about that. Um, the entrance and the traffic, I mean, we've looked at this from a site distance perspective, and I, I, I realize that traffic is becoming more of an issue everywhere. Um, there's just more cars on the road, but from a strictly site distance perspective, the site distance is there for this. The other thing that uh, that we've done is we've reduced the number of units here, which reduces the traffic, and we will not be hauling trailers in and out of here, which I suspect is part of the issue with them coming and turning slowly out of there or turning slowly in. That's part of the, the conflict that usually happens at, at entrances. So. That would not be what what, what, what is happening um, here. So, um, I think as far as the water goes, as I said, we had the well we had the well tested by a, a hydrogeologist. Um, you know, drawdown on wells in in the area for something that is you know I don't know 500 feet away or more is pretty uncommon. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's fairly uncommon. And what we saw in this well when we pump tested it was that the drawdown in this well was very minimal. It came down by like a foot and a half or 18 inches it came down, which is which is fairly small in the in the world of wells. Often they'll they'll draw them down, you know, 10, 20 feet. So I I, I don't know what's going on, you know, sort of globally with, with wells in that neighborhood, but I can tell you this one seems to have more than enough water than I think we're we could use on this site. Um, we do have to um, the, the well is part, it is licensed by the state as a public drinking water supply, so the, the well is tested on a regular basis for, um, for bacteria. That's a, a requirement of their license. Um, so I, I think we feel pretty confident that the water is there for, for this project. And also, uh, again, about the honeypot, is, is it your intention to get rid of that, right? I'm sorry. The, the, yeah, the, um, yeah, the, the so wagon. the septic, or the, the systems here now is a tank. Um, it's it's a, just a tank. And what, what's happening is they, they pump out of the trailers, and they bring it over here, and they put it into the dump station. So they put it in the tank. Somebody comes and hauls it away, right? Right. So that's the process. When you handle septage waste, that's not a good thing, right? I mean, there's 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 a chance for spillage. There's a chance for something happening. I don't, I, I don't, we don't have any record of that happening. We don't think that's happening, but it, it exists. The common systems that we all use right now are septic systems, right? We collect our sewage, we put it in it. There's also a a, a treatment system that is proposed for this. And that treatment system will treat the effluent, comes in um, into the tanks and is treated through aeration. What that does is it removes, um, it, it, it makes the BOD better, it um, deals with nitrates um, before it's discharged, it, it discharges a cleaner um, product when it's put into the leach field. That's different than we all have at our homes. If you have a septic system, you have a tank, right? Then it goes from the tank to the leach field. This goes from a tank to a treatment system to the leach field. The system has to be um, approved by the Department of Health and Human Services. It's an engineered system. It's designed by us as engineers. It's reviewed by DHHS and approved by DHHS. And we'll have requirements on it that require them to safely maintain it, monitor it, and make sure that it's running properly. In my opinion, that's a better solution than what's out there now. That's me as an engineer. Um, so that's where the where the wastewater is um, in trying to improve, improve that. Um, I'm just going down through the notes that I took here. Can I can I back us up just yep. a minute to the traffic thing? Um, just from my personal experience today, going out there for the first time, 
Is there intent to do different signage? Because part of what I'm wondering, listening to the abutters' concerns, having been out there as we all were, that sign that says Beaver Dam Campground is very small leads me to wonder if people are, you know, the guests that are not familiar with the area are coming in just kind of jacking the brakes, for lack of a better expression, when they see that sign. Perhaps uh, some more adequate signage. It has to meet our sign, sign no. ordinance. No, you which can't. Would, at this that time should be so. a smaller sign. That one's probably grandfathered in, would be my guess. But they're going to be hard pressed based on our ordinance to put in larger signage, if I'm not mistaken. I would have to review the sign ordinance, but if our, our sign oh, ordinance is pretty strict. larger that's needed, it's just more visible. visible. Right. Yes. Absolutely. It's just that it's. It's, it's not brown wood that yes. you can barely see from the road. Right. It's not an extremely noticeable sign. Coming from North Berwick, it's easier to see. Coming from Berwick, it's a little harder to see. Yes. It's, it's and it's not at the roadside. Right. It's, it's offset back. from the road. Right. Yes. right. Is that something that yeah, the developer we'll yeah, would be willing like to, to yeah, contemplate looking at some to sign? The, to the sign ordinance. Okay. I'll look through that, that and see what yeah. we've what we've got. Yeah. I just question, just sure. to clarify, for the dump station that you currently have, you dump it in there and somebody comes and pumps it out and hauls it away, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Because I think it was misleading before it was dumped in there and went down into the ground. But yeah, it doesn't infiltrate there. It goes into a tank and that tank is pumped out. Oh, there is that's, a leach that's field what, present, though. There is no leach. It's a, it's a tank in the ground. Oh, okay. So right. that's what So the, the one up in, next to the units... This one up here is is a leach field. Yeah. So th th that is a leach field. There is a there's a dump station that's down here in the corner of the parking okay. lot right there, yeah. and so that is I mean it's fairly typical. It's an older system, right? It's a grandfathered system, right? And that's the way that you're used updating to do it. it. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. That's the way they used to do it. Yeah. Um, you know now it's that updating that system. In my opinion, is. Mm -hmm. Pretty much a no-brainer. You get it, but it doesn't. And that's to state standards, so exactly, yeah. uh, exactly. So that that is not leaching out. It's not going wherever. It's, it goes into a tank, and that tank is pumped mm -hmm. out. Mr. Chair, for me. Yep. I, and I know on the uh, site walk we we discussed uh, if there was a requirement for stormwater management plan due to the amount of paving that they uh, proposed to do and its proximity to uh, Beaver Dam Brook and would that require any type of a buffer and I just I, I don't have an answer on that I, I know that's your realm of expertise but if we're paving that to me it seems like it is going to be more of an opportunity to pollute that and yeah, does that require a swale a, or what do, what it's do we do? It's an acreage of disturbance threshold that you have to meet as to whether or not you need um, X permit or X plan or whatever. Mm -hmm. I assume you can speak to that. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we are the the stormwater. We're actually reducing the the amount of runoff on this. Right. As you reduce impervious area, you're, you're reducing runoff. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going. I don't remember what the number is, but um, pretty significant reduction. Yeah, you said yeah, thirty-three to nineteen. Right. No, I think your question is for the parking area. Correct. For the parking yes. area itself, my yeah, concern right. is with it, with its proximity to the, the stream, yep. well, um, you know, you're going from gravel to asphalt, you know, runoff coming off of that asphalt into the river. You know, I know people don't intend to have issues with antifreeze and oil and such, but sure, they do. Um, they do. Yeah. Yeah. The way the, the way it's the way this is designed is to pitch off of the do sheet flow, what we call sheet flow. So it's running off of that and using the. Um, it's more than seventy-five feet for the most part. Seventy-five feet away from that, and that serves as the buffer to treat that before it before it gets into the um, into the stream. That's What's there now is yep. is actually That's gravel, and that that in fact is is. You can actually see places where it's where it's eroded out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you pulled in there, but it, that that part of it, um, in my opinion, is going to get better by by creating a parking lot that discharges sheet flow off of that versus concentrated flow. Does that answer your question? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know if there was a requirement. That's that's my biggest thing. Is 
if we're I'm not a huge fan of asphalt and black topping stuff, mm -hmm. but if especially in close proximity to a walkway, I just want to make sure we're not creating an, an issue or a side effect. Yeah. Yeah, I undecided. believe it's an acre of disturbance that triggers the additional stormwater permits. Yes. Yeah, it's an acre. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. And more. disturbance. So that that requires a um, main general permit, which is mm -hmm. a permit that we apply for, you know, for construction. But um, it. In that we're reducing impervious area, we don't require a stormwater the stormwater permit. So there's no requirement. Is what correct? Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Um, well, of course, environmental impact studies. Um, so what we do have is a is a potential vernal pool that's over in this space over here. We have checked and scanned through the through the state. Um, Websites about the turtles, and we have not. Um, we don't have any of those located on this site. Other sites around there could have them, but we don't have that here. We did have this looked at by a. Um, 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 you can't. You can't. During this is. We did have this looked at by a um, by a wetland scientist this past spring during vernal pool season, and uh, it. it appeared that it was a vernal pool and what we've done is we've stayed outside of that to what we we pulled back I guess outside of that 250 foot setback which is a requirement of the DEP so we made that situation better in pulling it away um, traffic and noise uh, I mean I guess I'll get back to where we have less units out here and, and we're reducing that um, amount of traffic by reducing the number of units here. Anna, quick question for you. Yes. What um, triggers an environmental impact study? The board wanting one. Okay. There's no specific line in the ordinance that I'm aware okay. of that requires one for a certain size or such. Okay. There may be for a subdivision some type of review there, but not for there's this type of development. Okay, because this is just a conditional use mm -hmm. and not. Yeah. Um, okay. So that would be the difference between a subdivision, which. I don't know for sure if there is one for a subdivision, but I know there are some additional reviews that you can get in a subdivision, and okay. that may be one of them. We do have some MDO, uh, <laughs> MIFW things in subdivision that do not appear in conditional use. Okay. This is much more conditional use is much more um, board guided, I guess would be a way to specify that. Okay. Like you can request. At our discretion. You can yes. request any additional whatever you want. Okay. There's nothing that says you need to if you get to a certain size or whatever. So I, I guess that I have an environmental concern only because it sounds like both with the abutters concerns um, about sewerage and well water and runoff and a vernal pool and um, I'm guessing although you're doing a great job of trying to stay away from having to move or remove trees and whatnot there are going to be some that have to go by the looks of where your pickleball court goes this flags you showed us was the front of the court the trees behind it are way too close to support the pickleball court as is, so those trees are going to have to go by the looks of it. Um, so I, I as a board member, feel like I would like something done to look at this project from an environmental standpoint. Um, I'm not sure what is involved in an environmental impact study exactly, um, so I'm not even sure what I'm asking for, except to say that I have enough environmental concerns to want to feel better about it. Um, okay. Yeah, yes. being yeah. yeah. Okay. Which I think uh, the IFNW uh, uh, review would be very helpful here as well. Okay. Anna, you're going to have to speak up. Yeah, I wouldn't say that that's IFNW's purview. We're not necessarily talking about species impact. You're talking about 
water, that type of thing. Um, so, so that wouldn't DP be IFW's. Like then, or who? Maybe it could also just be an independent environmental engineer. Yeah. My thing. my concern would be that if we are uh, going to check the environment out, let's check it out for species as well, even though it appears that, uh, or we are told that it, it, there is no impact to species, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's just prudent do that we do that. Would you be comfortable with me doing some research to figure out kind of what the most applicable type of review would be? and then us talking about it at the next meeting. Yeah. Well, I think that that's great, but I also think that if we do feel like the IFW review is also important, even if your recommendation is for something other than that, we should also at least consider that. Yeah. Okay. I'd agree with that. I agree too. Okay. <clears throat> So the conditions, some conditions that we would put in place would be the IFNW, um, and the MP. environmental impact study, possibly pending Hannah's um, research. Okay. Yeah, I think the. I, I guess what I would ask is some direction on environmental impact yeah. study. That yeah. those can be from. Um, it could be very from, broad or very narrow, depending on the situation. Exactly. I mean, right. here's what I know. Yeah. Turtles aren't. There's no habitat on that site except this upper corner. Potentially, I'm not saying it's there. In that well, it's turtle. it's nice to say that, and I I respect your opinion, but it is just an opinion as you're not a biologist. This is true. And, and I have learned that biologists are the ones who determine habitat. We had we had like a well, scientist out there. He's looked at it. He's mapped that vernal pool, and we're outside, 250 feet outside of that vernal pool, about around the edges of it. That's the requirement that the state has. And we've pulled, we're actually inside it. There, there's development inside it now. We're actually pulling it back outside of that. Right. Again, made the situation better. No, I'm not a biologist, but yes, I have been doing this for a lot of years, as you can probably tell. Well, um, your buffer away from the vernal pool is, is enough that that's not going to, the only issue, I guess, is if there's any other locations that are on the property that do have that concern. Right. So if someone else did come just to, to verify that. Yeah, we'll have somebody, you can have somebody walk it and, okay. and tell them yeah. it's a developed site. Yep. I just got a question. Based on the concerns that everybody had as far as their wells go, I don't know what the distance requirement is. Should there so, be a as a board, that's not really our issue because it's different properties that, one, you have to say, you have to prove that it's them that's causing this. Well, that's where I was going. And that's not a board issue. That is a civil issue. Um, and we did put an earlier condition on the project that they had to flow test their well, which they didn't provide that, that, they had and they, that they have adequate flow and recovery yeah. for what they have proposed, and I, I think they've met that threshold yeah. as far as I'm concerned with yeah. that. I would agree with that as well. Because in the past, I know the board has issued that when a well was being used for something other than what it was designed for, that the abutting neighbors well, I mean, technically, this well has been used for the same thing. Right. So it, it it's the only right. difference now is that they're adding a restaurant to it. Right. I'm just asking um, to clear up yeah. for everybody yeah. that, um, that we've done. That I we've guess done. the yeah. major question is, are you going to be seasonal or are you going to stay open year-round? Then that starts changing more of the questions. If it's seasonal, then the usage is basically the same. If it's open year round, then the usage changes, and then that brings up some concerns with the water. Mr. Chair, if I may, the one thing you had mentioned, sir, was uh, the possibility of parking over your wastewater sewage system. Yep. Um, that, that creates, and I'm not an engineer, but that creates some unique engineering. Um, are you guys? prepared to do that, I mean, because you yeah. parking over a leach field, yeah. parking over your tanks, you know, that's going to be reinforced, and Correct. as I'm sure you know, but, yep. and that's an expense you guys are willing to take on to make that happen. Absolutely. The, the 
The plan right now is to use concrete chambers in that in that leach field, and those are H20 supported. You could drive a truck over them. Um, we, we do design systems like that in parking lots. There, okay. it's not uncommon. Okay. My feeling is we're going to have very little, if any, use over that. So we're, we're not creating a. a It'd be a case a by case type of thing. Yeah, only yeah. if we need it. Are we right. ever going to utilize it? Right. Well, so you know, are, is it your vision that your next plan would have that we can show it. lot on there? Yeah, we can there. show that to you. I mean, the idea is not just to leave it as a grass area that okay. would be used only for parking in the right. condition that we need to use it. Yeah, or just make a notation of it on, on your uh, plans yeah. that that would be used for that. Yep, that we way. can do that. We can add that right yeah. to the plan and show you what the how that lays out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If, if I could ask, and maybe I didn't hear it um, the first time around, but has a decision been made about the restaurant being public or just for the residents of the park? Um, the idea is to have it public. The idea is to have it yep. public? Yep. Yeah, and I think what I heard was that it was going to be public, but only when the entire park was open. Correct. Absolutely. And if yeah. the park was closed, then the restaurant would also close. Absolutely. Okay. But if the park stays open year-round, again, that exactly. really increases the use of the water. And, right. Yeah. Right. Right. So if I hear you correctly, you guys are going to see, I, I guess, if there is a demand for use in the winter, is that yeah. your vision moving forward? Exactly. Is, okay. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry, just to clarify for the notes. So you're saying that you're in, you're, the hope is to have it year round? Okay. Would that then impact the amount of parking that we need if the restaurant is open to people who wouldn't already be parked there for well, the Well, you would definitely have to do that other parking area. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's detrimental to their own business if they don't at that point. Including yeah. a place to put the snow. Right. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah, so the, the requirement for a restaurant is one space per three seats based on maximum seating capacity. So if it's a mixed use, technically, between the campground and the restaurant, then you would need a combination of the two. I believe. Okay. So you'd need that 56 spots plus the additional yeah. one, one spot three. for every for three. three. Yep. Okay. Yep, we'll show that. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair, if I may, yep. um, could the next plan set, Mr. Walsh, could the next plan set um, show where you intend to do your snow storage yep. if you do stay year-round? Yep, absolutely. Because I'd want to see that to make sure of environmental impacts. Thank yep. you. Mike, if I may ask one more thing. Yep. Um, so just to kind of circle back one last time to the pickleball thing, and I know that we can't tell you what to do or not to do, and, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, I just hope that you are um, listening to your butters mm -hmm. and the concerns that they have and um, would just ask that you look at how important pickleball is versus being a good neighbor versus the amenities to the residents and what they want and that kind of thing. Uh, it does seem to be a, a hot topic, not just with you, but nationally, apparently. I've um, never played. I don't want to, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm just glad that the public has an opportunity to come and, and give their opinion, and it, it matters to us, and that we then take that and, and turn it into uh, a discussion, yep. which is all we're doing. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Like I said, I think they, the Ownership wants to be a good neighbor, and that's they're in the neighborhood, and they want to do that. So I think we'll do whatever we can to make that work. Okay. I have two things. Hmm? One, um, can we kind of circle back to the environmental studies? Mm -hmm. 
what really do you want to get out of these potential study or studies? I guess what what do you want to be studying? Okay. So we can figure out the best I, channels. I think to it's do so. two tiered. Is it, from my concerns, it's two tiered. One, the the natural resources and uh, habitat for the, ver the, the vernal pool and, and the IF and W uh, yeah. IF and W stuff. <clears throat> yeah. But an additional the the DEP piece for runoff um, potential for going into that stream and just you know some type of a third party to say yay or nay, you know. What's the impact? What are their recommendations to mitigate the impacts to the environment? From the parking lot, you mean? Or the, the, from the, the, the whole the thing? Project writ large, what is the okay. environmental impact? Yeah. You know, I think, you know, again, not an engineer, but looking at them reducing the usage, um, but adding a restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. potato, potato, but somebody who, who is smart about that stuff probably needs to give us an expert opinion. And just want to make sure that good. we're clear on exactly who we're yeah, looking which direction for. to go. I, I think it's a two-tiered approach. One would be, you know, IFNW for the species, yeah. and the other one would be DEP for the runoff and, and mitigation of, of pollution to that, that I'll stream. I'll add submitting that, that form to the tomorrow list. Now, <laughs> do you, I, I think we've asked this before, but do you have control or access to the dam? You do. You guys, you own that. Okay. But looking at it, it's not really adjustable. It is. It's just a set height. It is. It just the flows yeah, over. It's just the concrete weir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, overall impervious area. Just to sort of follow up on that, I'm doing some quick math here based on my chart. I mean, 40, 80, 91, 93,000 square feet of impervious area that we're actually removing. I'll verify that number for you, but I think that's the that's the amount of almost two acres mm -hmm. of impervious area that's being removed off of this site as part of this project. That's significant mm -hmm. on something this size. I have a second thing. Um, so the article, geez, eight, Performance standards, uh, 8.1, campgrounds and tenting grounds. Um, in your application, you had gone through all of the performance standards and addressed them to whatever end. Um, however, you didn't do section D, uh, which one of, you did A through C and all the things under there, but D was not included in that. And one of the things in that is an erosion and sediment control plan. Um, yeah, we could do that. That's not a problem. Perfect. That's really the only thing that's really an extra. Talks about laying out things, which is essentially covered in the other ones. Campsites to be clustered in groups according to intensity of use, footpaths, and erosion control. That's pretty much all in that section. So that's so the only one we're missing. Conditions. Well, so we have the public hearing still open, um, so I don't think we'll be making a any motions for this at this moment. Is that correct, Hannah? Probably yes. Yeah. Okay. But other than Would this that, be an appropriate time to just put on the record what our concerns are, that gives you the opportunity to come back and say, this is this is our plan Absolutely. moving forward. Because I think these are gonna end up being conditions. Is, is it appropriate for us to discuss that, Anna? Yeah, you should. So, so just, just a few things to, to think about. Uh, we talked about snow storage, if you're year round, what your plan is for that, and a map. Uh, parking, to include uh, your additional parking over the sewage uh, yeah. containment and leach field. Uh, environmental impact, whether that's going to be DEP, um, IFNW, or both. Noise mitigation and what your plan is for that, uh, what kind of product you intend to use, and some type of literature that would, you know, show some objective quality evidence to how well that material works. Yep. And then an erosion and sediment control plan. So just so, so those things are on your radar scope before you come before the board next time. Okay. That was all for me. Okay. 
Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Great. All right, moving along. Uh, preliminary plan, major subdivision, Goodrich Farm, R40, Lot 4, Durant, and Diamond Hill Road, Altus Engineering. Um, wait a Can minute. Can we just address real quick? Yep. Are they coming back in two weeks? Is that the plan? Or since you're continuing the public hearing? Yes. 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 It will be Does that give weeks. you enough time to put out the public notice? <coughs> uh, the second uh, we <coughs> don't notice on this, we keep if the continues? public hearing open, we do not give notice again. Right. It is just okay. open for the next meeting um, as long as you're, you guys are okay with showing up. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm confused because I thought I was sending out. You're noticing that the was, other project. That was the other project. Oh, yep. yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. Just for anybody All right, listening I'm, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> no, weeks. I'm glad I'm all confused. Uh, Will there be an opportunity for people to ask Yes, yeah, the next yeah, meeting. Thanks. So we didn't close the public hearing. So what happens is the next meeting, it'll be reopened. And if you have any more concerns or questions, you'll have your chance to speak. Okay. You there? You have the board. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, I'm Eric Siren with Alts Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the applicants. Uh, I have uh, Troy Williams and Isaiah Plant here. Uh, they are the applicants. And we're looking at Goodrich Farms, which is at the corner of Durant and Diamond Hill Road. We uh, had sketch plan on this uh, a couple of weeks back. We did walk the site as well, so you guys know the property. It's all pasture for the most part with the exception of some woods down on the bottom near Diamond Hill. Uh, we're looking at 22 and a half acres, and we're talking about seven lots. No road, no infrastructure of any kind. It's all just either private right-of-ways or road front lots, so it's very cut and dried. Um, there are three waivers in front of you. One is for the HIST map. Uh, obviously, we have passing test bits in all these lots, and the lots are oversized, so mapping the soils is kind of irrelevant at that point. Um, as well as a stormwater management plan and the sediment and erosion control plan. Uh, we're not building any stormwater infrastructure, so there's nothing that we can really calculate on right, that. Because you're just doing the lots. We're right just now. doing the lots, and they're, they're going to be sold off to private you know, homeowners. Mm -hmm. And they might not build, they might build something big, they might build something small. It's not something that requires infrastructure or anything or ordinance. Uh, and there's also a couple of criteria where the, this falls under. Uh, it's not in the watershed of a great pond. We're not adding any more than 5% of impervious area to the lot because we're not building any road. Um, and we don't have any grading. So pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, that's it in a nutshell, guys. It's pretty cut and dry in my opinion. So questions? So for this one, I don't have my memo in front of me, so I don't know if it's in the actions as to whether or not to approve the waivers, but I don't think you approved any waivers. We did not approve the waivers yeah. on this yet. Um, I knew it was for one of them. Do you have opinions on these? Do you I are in agreement? The HIST um, mapping, stormwater management, and sediment erosion. I think that they, because they are just splitting the lots and not doing any of the building, uh, they make total sense. Something that you can do is require individual homeowners to, or builders, I guess, to submit an erosion control plan when they get building permits, things like that. Um, since they're not building anything, they're not controlling any erosion. Right. Um, and the soils also, as long as we have test puts that they can do wells and septic, that's all that you should be concerned with at this point. It's really for the builders. Um, yeah, these, this basket of waivers, they're the same that we got on the Wentworth project eight months ago. Okay. So there is precedent for it. Yeah. Same, yeah. Exact, same exact kind of thing. No yep. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. So uh, let's discuss these waivers. Um, I make a motion that we approve uh, waiver section 7.2.D.10, his <laughs> mapping. I'll second that. You need to do these one at a time, right? Yep, yep. yep. I'll second that. Okay. Um, further discussion? No. All in favor? Okay. Next, um, I'll make a motion to approve the requested waiver for section 7.2.D.30, Stormwater Management Plan. I'll second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Wait, was that Don that seconded that? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, next, 
I'll make a motion that we um, approve the waiver section 7.2.D.31, Sediment and Erosion Control Plan. I'll second that motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Waiver is granted. Um, next is just finding the application complete. Second that. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Okay. Next is scheduling the public hearing. Um, we have one that's opened, one that's coming up on the next meeting. So that's going to be. And you October for this yeah. one. Um, and daylight is a premium. Well, we don't. We already it's did not the not sidewalk, so this oh, is just a public hearing. hearing. Oh, okay. Just so a public hearing. So. So that would be October 5th for the public hearing. Okay. Does that work with you? Works for me. Okay. And awesome. Eric, we have your, we have the rebutters list? I it, it, it's in the packet. Okay. But I did not see one for Norman Core and I went through the whole thing. Okay. I found that one. It's in there. Okay. Well, Good. Just, I did. <laughs> just for all of the developers that have been here and all of the developers that may be listening or watching this video later. A butter's list, a butter's list, a butter's list. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, just making sure. I can't, there's too many of them. I'm not, sh I want to just ask instead of trying to remember whose we've gotten and whose we have not received. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank you. All right. No new business. Um, I'll open up the se second public comment. This is for non-agenda item issues. All right, I'll close that. Uh, next is informational items. I just want to make sure the rest of the board had visibility. I did uh, have correspondence with the town manager on my requests for getting statements of performance from both the water and the sewer department. He has them on the record informally via email, uh, but he's going to have them put that in a document for the record so we have that moving forward as we're approving stuff for public utilities. So I just want to make sure you guys have visibility on that and I anticipate we'll have that soon. Mr. Chair, I have um, two items. One, I uh, have already discussed with one of the board members here. Mr. Raines had uh, pointed out that he was having issues with finding the uh, Altus engineering applications online. And as I explained to him when he came in, I think it was this week, but all the days are blending together. Thank you. Um, it appears to have been an issue with, we've been using when, when the planning board, whether it's Terry, myself, or James, when we take all of the digital submittals and we put them together for the packet that goes online and gets emailed out to you guys, we, use, we were using a program called Combined PDF. And that appears to, for whatever reason, I don't know, and I wish Eric, I wish I had said this before Eric walked out, um, for whatever reason, their submittal, it seems to wipe everything out of, but I was able to show Mr. Raines the actual original packet because he wasn't on the board at that time. So uh, this go around, Terry actually used a different PDF combined creator. Uh, we're hoping that eliminates the problem. So if anybody here or anybody listening has looked for an application that is appearing blank, it's a technology issue, not a we actually took a blank application issue, and they're welcome to come in and we will give them a, a hard copy to review. I wanted to make sure that that was very transparent. We were not aware that that was a, an issue, but technology is great until it isn't, and that's the way it works. But we have the hard paper copies. We do have the hard paper copies, okay. and they are, and everybody is always welcome to come review them, and that's I showed Rick that when he came in. Uh, but it's technology. It's yeah. not always perfect. It does perfect. happen. We have that at our firm. When we PDF certain things or we get PDFs in, if they're not done a certain way, they will not come through. See, and that's so, it's so funny to me because I, and Terry and I had this conversation, and this is completely kind of an aside, but Terry and I had this conversation because we're both kind of flabbergasted by it because they're taking the 
it's literally just supposed to take what you put in it and smash it together and spit it out, but apparently that's not how the technology works. So that's why I do buildings and not technology. Um, the only other item I have for you is that uh, I did purchase, because we do have a couple of new board members and we're always good for a refresher, I did purchase the uh, Maine Municipal Association's Planning Board Board of Appeals um, workshop, the latest and greatest update. And uh, I would like to see if the board would be willing to schedule an evening to do a workshop where we'll watch that and just review that. It goes over procedures, that type of thing. So I don't know if that's something you want to schedule now or if you want to consider it, bring your, bring your schedule books for the next meeting or something. But uh, I think I have it for 60 more days or so. Um, and I, the board of, I've already conferred with the chair of the board of appeals, and whatever date the planning board decides on, I'll just email the board of appeals, and if they choose to come, they can, because it is for both. But it'll just be a workshop, not an actual public meeting. So, how long of a video is it? I believe it's an hour and a half. I would have to verify that. I plan on, I'm going to watch it before I sit mm -hmm. you all down to watch it, basically so I know how much coffee I need to dope you all up with <laughs> before you sit through it. But um, I think it's about an hour and a half. You'll be buying. I will be buying. <laughs> and I'll be. And I'll be timing it. <laughs> is that something you can forward on to us that we could review? I would have then... to purchase it individually oh, for each one yes. of you. So yeah. it has to be, <clears throat> I can show it to a group. Yeah. But, um, can you I, zoom it? Put it I on mean, zoom. I guess I could set up like a co I could set up the work laptop and have it pointed at the work computer and do it. It's just it's a single you purchase it for either a single user or a group, but it has to be shown once. I can't like yeah. send you all out. Gotcha. I think if we're here, if we have any questions, we can kind of bounce them off. So, um, I'd agree with Don that yeah, doing let's do it. it. Yeah, we just have to schedule I'll take it. all the education you can give me. I, I don't think it's going to hurt any second. of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've got new board, new newish staff. Yeah, we yeah. just want to make sure we're all operating on the same page and covering all of these procedural things and being aware of what our procedural requirements are and what our, our limits are as well as what our... Um, what oh, what reach we have our full we want to be able to reach our full extension but not overreach and this should cover a lot of that as well as the order in which things should be done things that we don't want to overlook so perfect uh, do you want to schedule that at this point or do you want to could i suggest that we do that via email so that we all have like our schedules and Certainly, I can, I can that, email that to schedule that easier. out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just email a couple dates. And we'll... yep. You want me to email you guys a couple dates? Okay. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. Um, do you want no me to... Me. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Mondays are no good for me. Do you guys want to stick to a Thursday? Thursdays work Doing good. Doing an off Thursday? Yeah. Doing yeah. an off Thursday? Yeah. Thursday's yeah. good. Okay. On Thursdays. Okay. Okay, so I will send that out. And those were the only informational items I have for you guys. I have a couple quick ones. Okay. Um, one is I was in touch with a biologist from um, beginning with Habitat, um, Amy, and I forget her last name, um, who and is willing to come to towns and other organizations and give a presentation on how best use land management should be handled for developing and decision making and review and all those kinds of things. Um, and just wanted to ask if it was something that, not right away, because we're doing stuff, but maybe soon in the future have her come down and give a presentation, maybe at a planning board meeting if it doesn't take too long, um, so we can be more educated on That's things like that. That's good. Um, and then yeah. the other thing is, um, being, it, being human, I make mistakes. We all make mistakes, but it seems like there's a fair amount of mistakes going on that keep recurring that um, just cause little hiccups, um, whether it's a, a, not necessarily a typo, but um, errors in, and I'm not picking on Terry whatsoever, 
but errors in minutes or in the, the announcement for the public hearing versus the site walk. Um, and also procedurally, I know that the ordinance and the, the subdivision regulations are very specific on timelines for developers to be turning in things. And I also know that they're not always meeting those timelines. And we're not necessarily holding people accountable to that. Um, I also would would be curious to hear from Hannah um, in relation to the Woodland Pond decision to take back a vote when we had a brand new plan on a given night, but then allow a vote on a brand new plan on the next given night, why that was okay. And that doesn't seem to be along our ordinances where we need seven days to review a plan before we vote on it. We didn't have seven minutes to review that plan before it was voted on that night. So that's, that's curious to me. Um, why sometimes it seems like we follow regulations and sometimes it seems like we don't. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, please. Okay, so first things first, I would like to apologize to the board, the general public, all the people that came today to the meeting and the people that may not have been able to in regards to the typos. Um, something that I did speak with James about actually um, and Tuesday or Wednesday was the need to um, get things so that we're not so rushed because it is exceedingly difficult as as the board is mostly aware from speaking to me over the course of the last several months um, I'm trying to get the code office the way that I prefer it run um, Terry has stepped into the planning position. She's trying to get up to speed with all of the interim people and short-term people and not having people in these positions and having some like scant coverage. A lot of procedures were lost in more than just what the board is seeing. We're talking, um, you know, tracking escrows, number of permits, all kinds of things. And we're trying to get that caught up. Um, there's no magic wand that I can wave to get us all up to date and 100% schooled on everything. Uh, we're working very hard, as hard as we can, to get all of this. And Terry and I are kind of going to overlap a lot of this, which is why I feel comfortable speaking to it. But I did tell James that, you know, we realize we're coming to the end of the season. Things are going to start slowing down for the board and for me in the code office. Um, with that said, we want to be able to hit the ground running, not only with the procedural issues, which is part of why we purchased that, and Terry and I are going to watch that a couple times. Um, you guys only have to sit through it once. We're going to watch it a couple times. We have a couple other research things and trainings that we're doing to get us caught up on the planning aspect. Um, that being said, I've told James I, did, I don't care for, and neither does Terry care for, this uh, very sudden last minute like for example not that I not that it bothers me but I'm gonna come in tomorrow and do a butters notices we should have more notice we should have more time and while I understand we're trying to get these developers through and heard as quickly as possible there has to be we have to be following our guidelines you know um, that's something that I do apologize to the board for we're working on we're always open to constructive criticism if you guys feel there's anything we can be doing better or should be doing different, by all means, shoot us an email, come in, we're all, doors always open, state it at a meeting, however you best feel. Um, but we are working on that. Um, and then as far as the other, I mean, I know that... I don't that, know if I can really speak to that since they're not here anymore. Right. Yeah, but it's which is a closed problem. project, right? Yeah, it's, done, it's a done deal, but it, so... Cause Right? It's a they, procedural question. It's just a procedural question. So, and I and I have the same question, and, and it, it it resonates with me because we we approved that, and then we got pushed back, and you know you came back and told us, okay, that was not procedurally correct. Yeah. But we did the exact same thing. So I, I felt the, like we did the, the exact thing same with how thing. that went was that the first time that there's the approval, that plan when it went up, that was the first time anybody had seen it. Yep when there was the re-approval or the re 
visiting, whatever the correct term is, that had been previously previously submitted to myself and to Irish, and we had time to give comments back to the uh, developers how we would have for any other type of project. But we got it we, a half hour before the meeting. Right. We, we need have. time to look at it as a planning board, not just code and town planner. The whole idea between the subdivision and regulations and the timelines is to give us a chance to review something. We looked at it at a at a uh, you know 12, 15 foot distance and had to vote right away. You could have chosen not to. I could yeah. not have. I was okay. well, well, you couldn't have, but the board <laughs> the could, have said, could have we said we haven't had a lot of time to look at this. We don't want to approve it yet. That is totally within their purview to do so. Also, though, coming back to the policies, um, the timing of it, we should have had this voted six months ago. Well, I will speak to that in that it says in the subdivision regulations that within 60 days of submission of the final plan, it will be voted on or a timeline um, accepted between the board and the developer. So it's not a 60-day hard no. Right. But and we, we are giving the developer things to do. Right. So it was being extended, and I guess I would just like to say an emergency on somebody else's part does not necessarily mean it's an emergency on my part. Our timelines are set to be prudent, but if there was significant cause for something to be looked at, that extends that. Right. And, but that's also something like we should have been discussing more with the uh, developer, like like you said, or if this is 60 days, or it's something that is spoken about, where we didn't speak about it, we just kept adding to it. But it, then, I agree, I agree, but right. then it's not fair to say, well, we had to do it within the 60 days, because we didn't speak to the other half of that either. I'm not trying to be difficult, I'm just trying to say, we have subdivision regulations both for us and for them, mm -hmm. and we should hold them accountable, and we should hold us accountable, and we're not. I think we've discussed it in the past, and I think during, as we come into the slow season, and maybe as part of that workshop when we come in, I know we've talked about devising a checklist and a timeline for us. And I think that would be a there valuable tool. Yes, sir. I'm a huge Which, fan of checklists. Me I mean, we use them in the cockpit in military <clears throat> aircraft. We use them we use them for everything in industry and in, you know I don't think it's outside the realm of possibilities that we could sit in a room, digest that document and come up with a reasonable timeline and then a list of contingencies. If we have another project where we have environmental issues and, and it starts to take a left turn or a right turn. Okay, well, this is the procedure for that. Because it was, it was very muddy for me. And, and in my desire to do what's best for the town and what's best for the environment and what's best for the developer, it's always a delicate dance. Having that checklist would, would be huge, I think, for all of us. We and, have And then it holds us accountable. Takes away the emotion, too. It's just... It's black paper. and white. Mm -hmm. It's black and white. Check, yep, met, yeah. not met, not met, waiver required. We've been working on developing checklists. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is in the process. It's just a uh, trying to get it all situated. We're not going to give you something that's going to be useless. So let's, let's that, all be part of the solution. And yeah. if, if we're going to have a workshop anyway, let's... Let's get, Maybe let's, that let's the, get the parent document ahead of time. We all have time to look at that and decide what the important wickets are and what the timeline is, and we make a checklist that we can all agree on. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes anybody who comes behind us in the future, it makes their job a gazillion times easier. Yeah. Right. Another thing to take um, into this is the planning board here is fairly new. Mm -hmm. Me being the longest here, but everyone else, it's... You've been here maybe a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Don's brand new. Gary, uh, Jerry, and Paul have been here for a few years, three mm -hmm. years. Three, three. So, three. learning all the policies, procedures. Mm -hmm. It, the the other people that were here before when I first started was over twenty years experience. So mm -hmm. the changes have happened drastically with the moving of the cycling of the board, which. Having the new video, watching that, um, will get a lot of us up to speed with those pro policies and procedures. Um, but you're right. I, I think yeah. we just need to try to do better. Yep. No, point well taken. Yep. 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 And yep. honestly, every meeting we have, it's an opportunity for us to learn how to do things better. Mm -hmm. So it's comments like that will help Terry and I for sure.
to be able to help serve the board better. Also, as for the minutes, I'll also say, Paul Bovere, hope you're watching. Mm -hmm. When James was a planner, he would spot something every meeting that was wrong with the minutes. So we've had some pretty smooth minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Terry will appreciate that yeah. comment. Yeah. I, I have seen very few sets of minutes that have gone through without some corrections. Right. right. It, sometimes it's yeah. a big That's thing, normal. sometimes it's a period. Public that notices we might need to kind of iron ourselves with. And yeah, just those kind of have, refine that. Which it, accidents do happen, and sometimes things get lost in the mail too. And, and Terry has. Terry, Terry is not here because Terry's not feeling well, yeah. and that may have played into this is what she's dealing with right now. has been mm -hmm. ongoing for her over a week. So mm -hmm. she's, um, I'm apt to give her a little extra slack based on the fact that yeah. she still showed up yeah. and put and up and did her best. And we have open still, so if, yeah. if anyone. So we can hold you accountable and start her. You can, you can, you can <laughs> tie me to the rack, stretch me out. I need a little chiropractic cracking. <laughs> yes, Terry? I got a question. Certainly. Uh, We've been to South Berwick meetings for planning board. Mm -hmm. Paul and I have been to a North Berwick meeting. To Rick's point, if we do these checklists, I know South Berwick and North Berwick have notebooks for each of their board members with that information in, along with a copy of the ordinances and stuff that stays with them. Is that something we can do here so that they make a binder? Make a binder that's. Would stay. Or you guys don't have copies of the land use ordinance and subdivision regulations? Oh, we have the ability to print them at home, but we don't but have copies from the town. I think it'd be good to have a hard binder in front of you yeah, as I'm, you're I'm, evaluating. I'm asking, you guys were never provided a copy, no, no, a binder? No, not okay, a hard, no. hold no, on no. one second. Do oh, yeah. those binders have the ordinance in them? Yeah, because. We I did guess have I've never flipped through my South Berwick ordinance or binder to notice that there's an ordinance. <laughs> but they were, they were reading out of that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. The, well, they, the, that the binders that we get every meeting, because I get one too, has all of the application materials for yep. that meeting in it. And I guess I never realized right. that the ordinance was at the end. It was at the end. <laughs> I look it up on the computer every time. But then we can have these checklists <laughs> for so, what we're doing so we can refer to and just so it's like... Just for clarification's purpose, because I want to make sure that I'm understanding exactly what you're asking. So what you're asking is a binder for each that has basically the, the land use ordinance and subdivision regulations in the back, and then at the we would just keep them, keep them, and then before each meeting, instead of giving you like necessarily individually the packets. We would still get this, but that's something. But have the checklist in the front for each one with like the that. binder on top of it. Yeah, that would be great. That's what you're, what yeah. you're okay. Perfect. I we just can, want to make sure I order the right We can refine materials. what that is at the workshop when we talk about this yeah. and just come up with what we think. Because I think, to Rick's point, all this stuff kind of flows together unless you have something that kind of separates it apart. We're right. just a bunch of babies all new together, hanging out, trying to get it all figured out, <laughs> taking our first steps together, gentlemen. Well, maybe so, but it also it does have real impact. Oh, yeah. you know, like oh yes. I, I'm still mm -hmm. I'm still upset that Woodland Pond was approved without following the proper procedure, and probably nothing we can do about it now because well, it what was, that does is it holds us accountable, right? To making sure that every application that comes before us is held to the same standard. And you know what I mean. Not, I'm not saying that it's not, but it, there's a formal, drawn-out process. Thou shall do these things on this timeline, and we're not like, well, we'll do this and then we'll do that. It, it just—it's going to. It's brass tacks. It it, it, it gets mm -hmm. it done. It's going to help Terry and I as well because, like, it, like I said, I was I was telling James, I feel like. And I'm sure you feel the same way, Hannah, having to review all these things. I feel like we're not, because we're trying to get everybody in, and I understand we want to make everybody happy, which, for the record, that's why I'm not the most loved person in town is because I can't make everybody happy. But If it's um, black and white. You well, that's the it, thing. It's, it's not your job to make everyone happy. It's no, not we, our job but to we make want, everyone happy. We it's want our to. job to hold everybody to a written standard. But we so want to make that. everybody happy, so we hurry up and we get them in in the two weeks and the two weeks and the two weeks, but we really need the time to get the materials from them and get this out. And yes, okay, so you know what? 
there might be people that are a little upset and angry with us, Terry, and I might have to field a few more not-so-heavy calls. James might have to take some. You guys might have people complaining, but we might have to just start pushing people off a little bit further for next year so that we can all have time to not just quickly review it, to in-depth review it, because I would like to do that, um, and I'm sure Hannah would, and I'm sure all of you would, without the burnout that I experience when we have a huge list of, I mean, I was ecstatic about the shortness of the agenda because I was able to read all these materials and not have to be up until midnight, one, two, every night during the week. And I actually took two days off for bereavement leave and was able to do this and still review the materials because it was a short thing. Well, we need we, to be we've able to have... we talked about it before, too, is if, if the staffing capacity is such that we can't do our work in a detailed manner and, and provide a quality product, you know, I know we've done it in the past. We say, hey, no new applicants. And and if, if we need to do that, but that, that, that demand signal needs to come from the staff. The staff needs to say, we're, we're task saturated, we're at capacity, and then you, got, you guys need to tell us, this is what right looks like. This is how many new applications we can process. This is what our throughput capacity is, because we don't know that. So if the projects are coming before us, we're going to do our due diligence. Yeah. But if you guys don't have the administrative capacity, you need to say something. Because it's... we can easily, as a board, say, hey, our staff is telling us they can only do this much work. Let's, let's throttle back a little bit and not take on any new applicants for a while. Well, this is We've actually, this is actually, Terry's not, I don't think, I can't speak for her on the, the oversaturation of work. My issue is that there have been multiple, and this is something the board would not be aware of, I've been dealing with beyond the personal issues, um, you know, <clears throat> needing to take the two days for bereavement leave. Um, I have had, we've had several buildings here in town from a code perspective that I've had to deal with that are extremely unsafe. Um, so I've had other, I've had code emergencies, so in order for me to do my review, but I don't feel that the planning board's um, caseload should be dictated by how many buildings in town are falling down. <laughs> you know what I mean? If anything, we all if have anything. A, we all have a capacity, though. That's what I'm saying. If, yeah. if you are operating at that level, that your stress levels through the roof and, and you can't, and, and this isn't directed at you, this is just people in general, general. right? And, and this happens a lot in, you know, my background's in the military, as, as is Don and a couple other gentlemen. You always go to your star performer, right? Because you know they'll get it done, right? So you got people that slack off and don't get a whole lot of work and then you get guys that get the full workload, right? If you're getting the full workload, we don't know that. And, and that's something that we need as a tool, as a check valve, yeah. to make sure we are doing our due diligence for the people of this town because that's what that's what we're here for and every developer is going to stand up there and say yeah i'd like to get this done sooner right. as soon as possible of course you would yeah. i yeah. would too yeah. but eventually this is going to come full circle where they're going to get if they don't turn it in in time they're not on the agenda right right mm -hmm. and they'll get used to that after a yes. couple of times yeah. and it should be a two week they, we should have all the information two weeks prior and sometimes we haven't been getting that no. And, that's, and that's something that's, again, yeah. part of what I was discussing with James. Is well, and that would make it easier for Terry as well. If she doesn't get the, the information or if Hannah can't get the information out, then it just gets bumped to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's right. They're dropped off the and schedule. That's just yeah. on the In our, in our full process, I think we've improves. eliminated the, the issue that Mr. Raines brought is, you know, I received that plan a half hour before the meeting mm -hmm. and felt very pressured to move that along, um, we establish a timeline that says thou shall have your plan before the planning board out for review, what, whatever we decide is reasonable. But to me, a half hour before the meeting did not feel reasonable, and, and I felt pressured. That's in the regulations, 10 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mailed or delivered by hand to the office 10 days prior to the next scheduled meeting. Which, in fairness, we did have it. Didn't we? It was 10 days or 7 to 10 days prior to. We had time to review that. The Woodland Club. And Yes. Mm -hmm. I do want to say, in regards, you guys may not have received it. We didn't it, get it until 228 that day. Now, and, but I will say in regards to that, 
Um, first of all, the developers were not going to keep continuing, so you guys would have had to vote on something. Mm -hmm. They could have presented any one of those plans for you all to vote on. Um, they went with the plan that seemed to have the least impact, and that that particular plan, yes, those lots may be in the um, Black Racer territory, but that Black Racer territory, as Derek told us the day we were there, cutting in there does Well, I think we want to be benefit, careful but. because there's facts and then there's what's on maps. Yep. And we have GPS coordinates of a nest right where the driveway's going on Woodland Pond, and it's not on the map, so it gets approved. But the facts are, and everybody in this room knows it because we brought it, it was on a map, it's in an email from Derek Yorks, there was a nest there, and because it's not on a map, we have to be careful. We just we, we, we're, we're treading in yeah, so murky I, water. We have so to. Just, well, yeah, I mean, that's a double-edged yeah. sword. We have to go I, based I, off of what we have right. provided, document-wise. That's just, legally it, provided it's by not the. Also, just this mm -hmm. one. No, there's a whole lot of right. of things that need to be done different. But I did want to make you aware that the reason that but you guys would have had to vote on something. And that's that's the scary part right. for for me is we we with that project we did set a precedent. And I just want to make sure we have the administrative processes to empower mm -hmm. us to not be painted into a corner to make a decision. That we have the administrative process and the time to make an educated, well-informed decision that is in the best interest of all parties involved. The abutters, the critters, no, the developer, and, everybody. Yeah, and I understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I, I also do think that in many cases, and we've said it here, and members of the board have said it, um, sorry, but we're not ready to vote on this. I'm not ready to vote as a member. And I think as long as we're willing to stand up and say that, uh, no matter what the pressure is, I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll add to the credibility of this body. And uh, so, uh, this is an important thing, Rick, that that we need to come to grips with. And I think that if all of us just internalize that, I'm not ready, and uh, and be willing to say it. I think at that point uh, we're gonna we're gonna move our decision making to a more prudent time. Yeah. And I think one last thing, and I'll shut up. I promise. Is like I had to recuse myself from discussion and voting, but I don't feel like I should have recused myself from procedural comment. But I didn't know that I felt that way until there was procedural problems, in my opinion. And so going forward, we need to kind of look at what recusal means. So with recusal, I'm pretty sure, and Hannah might be able to add into it, once you're recused from it, the rest of the process, because you're not a voting member, it's you're not supposed to be saying anything. Right. I believe you can speak on the project as a member of the public, so you could have, if there was open public hearing, said something about it. Right, which uh, he did. Public hearings. But after right. that, yeah. there is no more comment. But, yeah. yeah, you're a member of the public at that point if you right. refuse yourself. And once the public hearing is closed, it is then for the voting members to discuss. Right. And that is that. That's fair. Yep. But we will always try to do better for the next time. There That's is no try, there's only, there's only do. Only do. <laughs> there is only do, yes. If there are no further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I would like to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> All right, good night. Thank you, sir. Usually it's a race. <laughs>